Hi everybody, thanks for tuning back in for another one of our Teleaquarium programs. We have another awesome program today. Today we are going to be talking all about algae. So my name is Haley and thanks for joining me. So I'm here in front of our bird habitat today in underwater viewing. You may have seen this on some of our live streams that happened earlier in the week, but we actually have a lot of really cool algae in this tank. So we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but you might have noticed there's this kind of really long tree looking thing that's over here in the middle. And then there's also around our fish, there's some algae on the ground in this tank as well. So we're going to be talking about that algae, but feel free to look at the fish behind me. Um, they'll probably be doing some cool stuff while I'm talking. So to get us started with a warm up activity, what we're going to be doing is I want you to look at these words that I've written up on this board over here. So these words, we have shampoo, toothpaste, yogurt, dog food, chocolate milk, ice cream, so lots of different things up here. And I want you to take like 30 seconds and try to think about what these items have in common. So go ahead and just brainstorm. If you think you know what they might have in common, go ahead and comment down below um, and let us know what you think. I'm going to give you a little bit of time with our list. All right, everybody. So hopefully you've had a little bit of time to look at this list of things. So it might be kind of tricky, but what all of these products actually have in common is they all contain algae. Yeah, so they all have algae in them. So shampoo actually has algae in it. Your toothpaste has algae in it, believe it or not. Things like yogurt, dog food, chocolate milk, and yes, even ice cream can have algae in it. So without you even knowing it, you probably interact with algae every day, or at least I hope you do. I hope you brush your teeth. So <laughs> that is probably more than you thought. But what exactly is algae? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So what is algae? Basically, algae is a aquatic organism. So it lives in the ocean and it can perform photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process of getting energy from the sun. So if we simplify that, basically it's a plant-like organism, so it's not quite a plant, it's a little bit different, and it gets its energy from the sun. So there's many, many different types of algae, but that's kind of a loose definition of what they are exactly. So what we're gonna be doing right now, we're actually gonna go over some algae anatomy. So we're gonna to try to figure out the different parts of our algae and we're gonna to try to label them. So I'm actually gonna be drawing over here. So if you wanna grab a piece of paper, a pencil, maybe some colored markers, and you can join along with me as we draw an algae. So if we come on over here, I'm gonna erase our words we had going on. Don't need those anymore. All right, and then we are going to get to draw an algae. So the algae I'm gonna be drawing today is a pretty common one. So it is giant kelp. Giant kelp. This is really common along the Pacific coastline. We do have some kelp in Alaska and it makes a really valuable ecosystem, which is a kelp forest. So we have kelp forests here. Some of them have giant kelp. Some of them have bull kelp, which is more reminiscent of the stuff we have in this tank, but it's a very important species. So we're gonna be drawing a giant kelp today. So first of all, down at the bottom of our algae, we kind of have something that looks like an upside down basket. So you can draw it however you like, but kind of just like a little hodgepodge of all sorts of little sticks in there. So this is called the holdfast. So I'll go ahead and write that up for you. So we got our hold fast right there. So the hold fast basically sounds like what it does. It will hold on tight to the bottom of the ocean floor. So the algae doesn't want to go anywhere. It's going to hold on to the ocean floor so it doesn't get swept around by waves, all sorts of things like that. 
But what's kind of different between a hold fast and algae's root systems is it doesn't need to soak up any water or soak up any nutrients. So algae doesn't have a vascular system, which basically is like the transportation system in our plants. So its purpose is basically just to hold on and keep the algae in place. You might see in, maybe if you're out on a beach or walking around, if you're going in tide pool, you might see some of these wash up and it's super cool if you find one to kind of dissect it, take it apart. You might be able to find all sorts of things living in there like tiny sea stars, crabs, maybe some baby urchins. So definitely check them out if you ever are lucky enough to find one of these. All right, so moving right along, if we're growing up with our algae, we can go ahead and draw the next bit, which is gonna go all the way up right here. I'm not the best artist, but we'll get the idea. So this is called the stipe. So the stipe of our algae is basically its support system. So it will support the rest of the algae, what it needs. Um, but like we said before, it doesn't actually transport any water or nutrients because if we remember, our algae is an aquatic organism. So it's actually already in the ocean. So it can gather its nutrients from the water around it rather than transporting it through its tissues. So the stipe is pretty much just for structural support. Kind of like a stem, but a little bit different from a plant. All right, and from there, we have in some algae, not all algae, and it looks different depending on the species of algae, but we have these things called air bladders. So in giant kelp, it's kind of scattered around. There's like little air bladders every so often. And then in our bull kelp, so the species of kelp that we have actually in this tank over here, it just has one really large air bladder. So if we take a look at that one, basically we can see its stipe going all the way up and then it has one big air bladder that's towards the top of the algae and then all of its um, blades, we're gonna get to those in a second, are coming out of that air bladder. So that's kind of what our giant, our, our rather our bulk kelp looks like, but for giant kelp, it has air bladders all throughout it. So these air bladders are right here. You wanna be really fancy, these air bladders are actually called pneumatosis, um, spelled with P, so it's a little bit of a tricky one, but that is their scientific name. All right, so we have our air bladders here. So those, their purpose is basically to act like a string of balloons and they're going to be lifting the algae up. So if we remember back from what I was saying earlier, algae gets its energy from the sun. So it does photosynthesis. So it wants to remain upright in the water. So if a big wave came along and pushed the algae over and it got clumped up all at the bottom of the ocean, that wouldn't be so good for it because it would probably not have as much light input. So with the air bladders along it, it will keep it floating and towards the surface where it can get more energy from the sun. And then, last but not least, attached to each of those air bladders or attached to one air bladder, if we're talking about bull kelp, then it would have these lovely blades, which kind of function like leaves in a plant. So go ahead and draw your blades on your kelp there, all the way down. Awesome. So yeah, as I said before, these are blades. Yep, so our blades in our algae, they are basically big platforms for photosynthesis. So this is where all those pigments are to take in the sunlight, they can absorb it, and then they will be able to turn it into food for the plant. Great, so now you should pretty much have a basic outline of what an algae looks like. So we have our air bladders, we have the stipe, we have the blades, and the hold fast. So these are the main anatomy structures for our kelp. So I'll go ahead and leave this up for just another couple seconds so you can finish up your drawing. And then we're gonna move on to some different types of algae. Okay, we're gonna start erasing that. All right, so as I was saying before, there are a couple different types of algae. So when looking at algae, scientists kind of tried to figure out a useful way to divide them. 
So when scientists look at different organisms and they're trying to do something called classification, they're basically trying to sort them into different groups to figure out maybe some common characteristics that they have. So with algae, the characteristic that they used was actually their color. So they've divided algae into three basic groups based on their color. So those main three colors that we're going to focus on are brown, and then we have green, Ooh, maybe we can see my green marker, if not, sorry, apologies, and then we also have red. So these are our three main groups of algae. So scientists don't really refer to them as brown, green, and red. They will sometimes um, refer to them as more of like a detailed name, so more of a scientific group name. So I can go ahead and write those up for you too. They are a little complicated because they're in Latin, but I think you guys can handle it. So for brown, they are called ochrophyta. And then for red, oh, well, sorry, we need to green first. They're called chlorophyta, so kind of like chlorophyll in plants. And for red, they're called photophyta. Yeah, so those are just the more complicated names. We can just call them red, green, and brown algae. So if we look back over to our tank behind me, we have our bull kelp, and our bull kelp is actually a member of the brown algae family. So it is a member of Ochrophyta. And then kind of on the rocks in the back, you might see some like red fluffy stuff that kind of looks more of like a carpet. Um, that is a member of our red algae family or Rhodophyta. So all sorts of different algae going on. And if you're out and you're looking in the ocean, you might be able to see different algae in different places. So some of them will live in different habitats. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is why are we talking about algae? Why even bother talking about it? Because some people think that algae is pretty boring, but it's not. It's great. So why is algae important? So the first thing is that it is the base of a lot of marine food webs. So a lot of things eat algae, and then they provide food for other things. So we call this a producer. So the algae will get its energy from the sun, and then it will produce energy for other things to consume. So an example of this are sea urchins. Sea urchins love to eat algae. They especially really like kelp. If our sea urchins upstairs in the touch tank get kelp, it is an extra special treat for them. They really like it. Um, so they'll go and they will eat the kelp. And then sea urchins provide a really vital food for things like sea otters. So if sea urchins weren't around, then the sea otter population probably wouldn't be doing that well, especially in places like Alaska, where we have a lot of sea otters. So it's very important that we have these species of kelp around to feed our urchins so our urchins can feed our otters. So important for that reason. If you like sea otters, you should also like algae. Um, and who doesn't? <laughs> and then another reason that algae is so important is that it actually provides um, a great amount of oxygen for us. So there's basically uh, algae provides about 70% of the oxygen you breathe. 28% is from rainforest and 2% is basically from other sources, but about 70%. So the vast majority of oxygen in our atmosphere is actually provided by algae. So every time you breathe, some of that is probably coming from some form of algae, whether it be a really big species of algae, kind of like this one behind me, or some algae that's very, very tiny and microscopic that lives in the water, we can call those phytoplankton. So those are little, tiny, tiny algae um, in the ocean. So some of it might come from things you can't even see. And lastly, it's also a really great habitat. So you can see all of our fish behind us, they're kind of coexisting with that algae. In a lot of places in Alaska, we have kelp forest habitat, which is really vital for a lot of our fish to seek shelter in, maybe to raise their young. So that is a really important thing as well. All right, everybody. So we are going to wrap up today by doing a fun stretching exercise. So if you've been sitting with me for this whole time, go ahead and get off your chair, get off your couch, and we are going to stretch. But we are going to stretch like we are becoming algae. So first of all, take a couple of deep breaths. So you go ahead and breathe in, breathe out. And if you keep doing that, 
And you take about three breaths. Two out of the three breaths you just took, those had oxygen in them that were actually provided by algae. So you can say, thank you, algae. And then once you've taken your couple of deep breaths, if you want to join me kind of down here on the floor, um, so you can be kind of hunkered down like this. So we're first going to pretend that we are a hold fast. So like we were talking about with our algae anatomy, our hold fast is going to anchor down to the bottom of the ocean floor and it's going to reach you to the floor. So once you come out of this, you are not going to move your feet because our algae does not want to move around. It wants to stay in one location. So go ahead and anchor your hold fast right here. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to grow with our stipe. So we're going to have our stipe go ahead and reach up all the way to the surface of the ocean. So you can head, go ahead. You can grow. You can kind of grow in whatever shape you want. I'm going to grow in a wavy form, I guess. <laughs> and then once you're grown, you can go ahead and reach towards the sun all the way up. And then what you can go ahead and do is you're going to stretch your arms out to your sides. So these are going to be your blades. And you can put your palms up, so those are your big platforms for photosynthesis. And then you can kind of sway around and pretend you're in the ocean and you're in algae. And if you want, you can repeat this process a couple times, get some really good stretches in there, um, and get all warmed up for the day. Yeah. All right. So that's about all we have about algae. Um, I hope that you had fun, maybe stretching, learning some stuff with me. And I hope that you join us back here at the Alaska Sea Life Center for some of our programs later in the week. We have programs every day at noon and 2 right here on our YouTube page. Also, if you like what we're doing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel down below so you don't miss further updates and more videos. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me again and have a great rest of your day.